it's Thursday afternoon and it's time for another Nature Works teaching video. Hi everybody, this is Nancy and I want to welcome you to our Nature Works design studio. We have completely transformed our little greenhouse into a workspace for two to three designers to make creations from flower arrangements to um, baskets of greenery to wreaths, you name it, we can make it. So I thought I'd just show you how we have this set up. We do sell beautiful ribbons by the yard and we have all different kinds and colors, including some really pretty Thanksgiving ribbons. We do, we just got in fresh cut flowers. As you probably know, we normally don't have cut flowers except for Thanksgiving and Christmas. So it's really exciting for us to put on this new hat every year and do this. Um, we also have a lot of unusual greens that I'm going to be showing you. I spent the morning harvesting in my yard and uh, the crews are harvesting and bringing stuff in as well. So next week we're going to really be working with the Christmas and the Thanksgiving. But today I wanted to show you how to make a Thanksgiving centerpiece, the Nature Works way. So come into my little design area. First thing you need is to pick a container. And in this case, I'm going to do what we call a long and low. And a long and low is a centerpiece that can go in the center of a table. So we keep records of people place orders of how many people are at your table, how many inches long it should be, etc., etc. So this is Oasis Floral Foam, which I have pre-soaked in water and a little bit of um, floral preservative. Um, so that's what I did when I first got here today. And now I'm going to add the floral foam to the container. And one of my tricks of the trade is I always want the floral foam to be higher than the box itself. Because if you were to put a flower in here and the floral foam was even with the box, everything would just be upright. But if you have it up a little bit, you can have a lot of the flowers dangling down. So you can get a, an arrangement that hides the workings. Next, we're gonna take this florist tape, which is called Davy Tape. I don't know if anybody realizes that, but it is called Davy Tape. And this is a waterproof sticky tape. So I'm just going to tape down my Oasis floral foam so that it doesn't shift around. And we wanna make our arrangements so they're extremely long lasting and very durable. One of the nice things about this style is that if you use fresh greens and flowers and you keep it watered, you can switch up some of the Thanksgiving colors or Christmas colors or move the flowers out and add more greens. So I've been harvesting like crazy. Um, and today was an absolutely stunning day to harvest. The first thing you want to do when you're making an arrangement is to green up your container. Um, so this, for example, is, and when I teach how to do this, my most important thing is to always tell you about the plants. So this is Japanese holly with little black berries. And this is going to start showing me how long uh, and what the actual proportions of this arrangement are going to be. So I'm adding these greens in just to sort of get a line in this arrangement. And I love this because they're freshly picked and they have these beautiful berries. And everything you put in an arrangement really has to be edited. So you don't just take a big old piece and stick it in there. You try and eyeball about what size you want it to be. And once you've done the ends, you can do some on the side. And remember, we're gonna use a lot of mixed greens, a lot of different textures, a lot of some shiny greens, some needle greens, some broadleaf greens. So we're gonna really mix this up. So we'll start with this Japanese holly just to get the ball rolling. Next, I'm gonna add this really pretty golden camisiparis. It's a thread leaf camisiparis. This does not get dipped in wilt proof. A lot of our greens are wilt proof to make them longer lasting, but camisiparis and arborvitaes and cedars and junipers don't take well to dipping. And when you wilt proof your greens um, or you wilt proof your plants outside, always read the instructions to make sure what you're wilt proofing can actually be wilt proofed and read about the temperatures. Today's a beautiful day. And it's, it would be a great day to do some wilt proofing, especially because the ground is quite moist and you're gonna be sealing the moisture in. 
So you can see how I'm greening this up or yellowing this up by using a couple of different kinds of evergreens. And another one that I picked is a second form of arborvitae. This is from my yard. This is a gold tip American arborvitae called Sudworthii. And it seems like the more I pick it, the more fresh growth I get every year that's that beautiful yellow color. So I'm basically layering this up, trying to green, I always green up my container first before I add flowers. And a lot of people start with the flowers, but you really want to start with your greens first. Another green that I love to use that's very, very long lasting is Japanese umbrella pine, Skyadopides verticillata. This doesn't even seem real. I have, aren't you? three trees in my yard and we have a tree here at Nature Works. These have been dipped in well proof. So they should last you as long as you want them to last you. And you see what these do. These add this star like effect to the arrangement, which is really fun. Um, it just adds not only texture, but movement to the arrangement. Now we have a bunch of different designers here at Nature Works and everybody has a slightly different style. So it's really fun to do this because everybody's doing it just a little bit differently. And we have lots of opportunity for creativity. So if you are going to make your own arrangements, you wanna think about how, what's your color scheme, what color's your tablecloth or your napkins if you're going to that direction, um, what color candles you're gonna use. We could also add candles to this arrangement if we wanted. These are candle holders. I could place these in and put beautiful mole hollow tapers in there. So you want to kind of figure out where you're going with this, how many people are going to be at your table, how tall you want it to be. If it's something for the center of the table, of course it has to stay low. And I'm using some common boxwood in here as well for yet another texture. And even though it's similar to the Japanese holly, in my opinion, it has a slightly, it has a smaller leaf. So I really like the way they juxtapose together. Um, the other green that I brought in to use in this arrangement, believe it or not, is Taxus, which is common yew. I think yew is fun because it's a dark, dark green. It doesn't scream of Christmas like a spruce or a fir would, but it holds up really, really well. And um, most people have you somewhere in their yard, uh, unless you've ripped out all your old bushes and planted new bushes. Um, I actually don't have you in my yard. And um, I was thinking just today of a place to plant a small hedge of it, just so I could have it for this time of year, because it's a really pretty dark green. And um, I find it very, very useful for especially Thanksgiving arrangements. So once you've kind of greened up your container a little bit and you're feeling like it's, it's really working, next up, you're gonna start adding your flowers. Um, so I have lots of different flowers at my disposal, as you can see by, by looking around, but every arrangement's different. So what I thought I would try to use is this palette, which is two different kinds of mums, a button mum and a daisy mum. A little bit of solidago, which is basically a goldenrod. A little bit of green hypericum, or St. John's wort. And definitely some of my beautiful orange winterberry, which I just picked this morning. The leaves haven't fallen off yet, but they're easy to clean. So you want to take your flowers and add your main flowers first. And again, you have to edit your stems. These mums are very tight together. So let's think of putting plant flowers in in threes rather than individually. I take a lot of the leaves off. The leaves on the mums do nothing for me. They don't hold up as long. So I add the beautiful daisy mums and you see how I can get four bunches out of two stems by cutting the tip out. So I'm trying to kind of make this a little bit more, um, uh, what would we say, um, balanced 
or have the flowers distributed evenly. Nothing is wasted. Even these little pieces, the individual florets will be used if they have a long enough stem. So I'm using my orange daisy mums, and then I'm gonna use these button mums. And it takes a while to get comfortable doing this, but what I tell people to do is to just buy some flowers, pick up some flowers here, come in, let us show you a nice combination. Let us, you know, set you up and play around with it. Because once you get used to doing this in the growing season, you can grow cut flowers like we do and practice making arrangements so that eventually you're going to have a lot of fun doing this for your own home and to give us gifts. So these are button mums. Now, can you see how important it is? Then I'm alternating shapes and textures. I've got my button mums next to my daisy mums. So we want, we wouldn't want to do two different daisies. We want different shapes and textures. And you can see how I'm trying to distribute them evenly. Next up is the tansy. And I may not need two stems of tansy because I'm going to edit this down. Tansy is an herb. I love tansy. I grow it in my yard. Um, even that might be too much, so I'm going to add the tansy. And now can you see, when I add the tansy, how the little yellow tansy button flowers mirror and echo the button mums. And that's what's fun, is to be able to play around and make everything kind of talk to each other in the arrangement. So in that one stem of tansy, I was able to get all of those flowers. So now we're gonna take the second stem of tansy. And you see how I'm taking some of these side branches off. And I'm gonna add that guy right down there. Here I've got more little side shoots. So I'm gonna individually cut them off. This is called editing and you really want to edit as you go along and you don't wanna waste anything. Now that I've added the tansy, I'm going to pop this with a little bit of these orange winter berries. And this is a variety called winter gold. And what I like about it is the birds tend to not want to eat it at this time of year. They tend to wait until the winter time. And the, the winter gold winter berry just adds yet another texture. It's so pretty. It's so interesting. I have, it is pollinated by the same male that pollinates my red sparkle berry. So I don't have to buy a separate male pollinator for this plant. And it seems as if every year when I harvest these berries, next year they grow right back. So it's, I've been able to keep one plant going for all these years and have enough for the retail store. And again, you can see how I'm looking for good tips and I'm trying to edit the flowers out and get a nice distribution of the orange berries. So with the winter gold berry in there, I'm taking this tip off, I'm taking these berries off. And I know you go, oh, you make it look easy, but basically what you wanna do is you just wanna play around with alternating shapes, textures, and forms. Now, another thing that I did was I took a drill and I drilled a hole in the bottom of a dried pomegranate, added some hot glue and added a pick. And I did that before I started this video. So pomegranates are nice because they kind of segue between Christmas and Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving and Christmas. So these three pomegranates have been pre-drilled. And believe me, with this container and these pomegranates, no matter what the season, you're gonna be able to switch out the Thanksgiving flowers for Christmas flowers. Another thing that I've drilled, drilled a hole in and glued are these, and these look like a pumpkin, but they're really an ornamental eggplant. And we actually sell the seeds of these. And the ornamental eggplants are fun because they look like pumpkins at this time of year. They're dried. So when you break this arrangement down, you put them in a little uh, container with a top and you can save them to have for year, from year to year. I save everything. I reuse a lot of my um, embellishments for my arrangements. Isn't that fun? So now we've added the ornamental eggplants, which we call baby pumpkins. We've added pomegranates. Maybe I can add a couple of cinnamon sticks. You know, we want that harvest theme to be going. We sell cinnamon sticks by the individual. 
I think that people, when they're sitting around the table and they're really examining an arrangement, they're always surprised at what they see. If your cinnamon stick is too long, you can give it a cut. And it's just fun to get people thinking about what kind of harvest-like stuff is in your arrangement. Finally, I'm gonna add the rest of my filler. This is my Solidago, which is the goldenrod. And what we're looking for is holes that we can fill in with these little bits of goldenrod and nothing is wasted. So I take the, I snip off the little stubs and I put in the goldenrod wherever there's a hole. And the final step is one, one more element, which is the green hypericum. Again, I break it apart, I edit it. Now you can see that the green hypericum kind of talks to the berries and it talks to the tansy. And so I'm clustering a bunch of it together in the center. Now I went to school for this back in the 70s, but I believe that there are not as many rules to intimidate you as you think there are. I think that if you have a fine collection of interesting ingredients, you have fresh materials, you have floral foam that has um, uh, been soaked in preservative, and you just start playing around that anybody, and I mean anybody, can do this. So just get some flowers and give it a try. You can do this with fresh greens. We're going to be demonstrating this all the way throughout the growing season when you come to visit uh, on Thanksgiving and Christmas time. You come in the greenhouse and you'll see Amber, Leslie, and myself making beautiful arrangements for orders and for the retail store. If you feel like you're not up to doing this, stop in. We're open every day except Thanksgiving, and we always have something made up to pick up and carry. Like this one Amber just made a few minutes ago, and she actually stuck a pumpkin in there. So, we've got ourselves a long and low Thanksgiving centerpiece that can be segued to a Christmas arrangement at some point. I have to go back in and just tuck a little bit more pieces of greenery in there to hide the floor foam. But there it is. So hopefully you're inspired not only to play around with flowers, greens, berries, pods yourself, but to come in and see what's going on at NatureWorks. It's new every single day. This is Nancy Singh. See you at the Garden Center. Bye.